what's up tribe how you guys doing go ahead and hit that subscribe button i hope you like this video <clears throat> this is the secrets of playboy season one episode two um so i'm not sure like i said i'm not sure how many episodes this series has but i know that the next one will be on monday so they gave us back-to-back -back episodes last night and then next monday we'll get the next the next episode now this episode was called girl next door and it was basically all about holly madison now, some of you may not know who Holly Madison is. You may not remember. But back in, like, the 2000s, um, Girls Next Door was a reality show on um, the E! Network. And it was about Hugh Hefner and his three girlfriends. It was Holly Madison, it was Bridget, and it was Kendra. Now, Kendra eventually, we know, left. She ended up marrying Hank Baskin, who was a football player. She had a whole nother reality life, right? Holly was always considered, out of the three girlfriends, Holly was considered the main girlfriend. She was the one that actually lived in the room with Hef. She was like his bottom you-know-what. Now, this was her story. So immediately we see her, um, and we actually meet a couple of other friends, Allison Reynolds and um, her husband. Now, Allison Reynolds and her husband, they were basically defending Hugh um, 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 Hef, and they were saying that Holly was just a gold, a gold digger and, um, not gold, like, digger like that, but basically she was there, she knew what it was about, she was there for the, for the exposure, for the notoriety, she chased after Hugh, you know, she absolutely, like, he didn't pursue her, she pursued him, she wanted to be the girlfriend, and she, they couldn't believe that she did what she did because she ended up writing a book. And in her book, she talked about her life in the mansion. Now, let's talk about it a little bit. First of all, we found out that um, Holly has, it sounds like she self-diagnosed herself with having Asperger's. I don't know if she went to a doctor, but she grew up, she said she always sort of grew up, you know, with this little quirkiness and, and her mother always said that she thought she had Asperger's. I'm only saying, I'm this didn't have this has no bearing on the story. I'm just telling you what she said, child. Now, um, Holly talked about she did. She was she was a she said she grew up. She grew up in all of the best. Like everybody she idolized started off as Playboy bunnies. I mean Playboy. In Playboy, she said the Pam Andersons, the Jenny McCarthy's, um, she named somebody else. And all of them had one thing in common, they all been in Playboy. And so she was like, she grew up wanting to be in Playboy. Like, she never made any bones about it. She never acted like that wasn't something she wanted to do. She absolutely wanted to be in Playboy. She was working for um, Hawaiian Tropic, I think she said, as like a model and one of um, Hugh Hefner's photographer saw her and he invited her to a party at the mansion and basically the rest was history. She went to the party at the mansion. I guess she made the right moves to court his attention. She got invited to come back and then eventually she was asked to be one of his girlfriends because at the time, him having an entourage of girlfriends wasn't new. So it seems like somewhere in the 90s into the 2000s, is when he transitioned into go, you know, like forget this whole one girlfriend at a time thing. I'm just gonna have a whole slew of girlfriends and it's gonna be what it's gonna be. Now, they talked about the fact that a lot of the girlfriends never admitted that they were actually having sex with Hugh. They made it seem like it was all just, you know, for appearances, that they weren't actually sleeping with him. Yeah, they lived at the mansion, but it was all really, you know, it was all more of a, Put, uh, living up to the playboy mindset than them actually having sex. Well, Holly told the story of the first night she went out with them as part of the girlfriend clique. And that night they went back to the mansion and went to his room. And it basically was a whole orgy situation. And she absolutely slept with half. Matter of fact, she said she was first. She went first. She said the next morning she woke up. She was sick to her stomach. It, you know, she wasn't happy about what happened, but she ain't leave. Now listen. Two things can be true at the same time. Because we're going to talk about the fact that Hugh ended up 
not treating her very nice. But two things can be true at the same time. He could have not treated her very nice, but you also made a decision in the beginning to stay because it seems to me like if the first night that you were his quote unquote girlfriend, you were sort of initiated into the situation with the whole orgy, you knew what it was. You knew what the expectation was. You knew what they wanted from you. You knew what it was. Um, she talked about the fact that, and this was, this, this came up in the first, um, part one where they talked about, um, now in the first episode, they talked about the fact that there was a lot of drugs and that kind of thing, you know, to sort of get the girls loosey goosey. And she said the same thing was true with, with here. Um, eventually she went from being like, you know, the third or fourth girlfriend to basically being the main, you know, his main girlfriend. And they said that her, the way she did that was basically being what he needed or wanted in a girlfriend. Like she liked what he liked. She, he, he used to have movie night. Like I think they said Tuesdays and Thursdays he had movie night and she always went to movie night. And even though they would watch like old classics, she always loved them. If he, his, you know, his music, she listens to his music. Anna Nicole, that was the other person she said she looked up to and idolized. It was Anna Nicole. And again, all of those, we know all of those were Playboy bunnies. Um, and so she talked about that and she said, you know, and they asked her, well, you know, did you, did you find yourself falling in love with him? And she said, you know, at one point, yeah, I, I, yeah, I did. Um, and we all do that, y'all. You know, we've all been there, done that. You know, you find that man, you in love with that man, and it, it is what it is. Like, we all been there and done that. So, they talked about, um, she talked about the fact that he would pit the girls against each other. So a lot of the girls ended up hating her. So she really didn't have any allies in the house. She didn't have any friends in the house because all the other girls hated her because she was his favorite. And um, as a result, she was very isolated. You know, it wasn't until Bridget, the other girl next door came along that she, they became cool because Bridget was like, I never wanted to be his main girl. Like I never wanted to be that. I never wanted her position. So I, it was never a rivalry there. It was never anything to be jealous of. It was never an issue. I never wanted that. She said that when she first moved in the mansion, she tried to keep her job and keep some semblance of independence. And he made her quit her job. Um, I mean, she was a waitress. So we're not talking like a fortune 500, but she said she wanted to keep some sort of independence. She talked about how they weren't allowed to leave the house. They had a nine o'clock curfew. They did get an allowance of a thousand dollars a week, which in 2000 money, I mean, hell thousand dollars a week right now is decent money, but you know, 20 years ago, a thousand dollars a week was, it was pretty decent money, you know, um, to not work, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm not talking about the other stuff they was doing, but I'm just saying to not work, you know, um, and then we did, we, we, they sort of kept flashing back to like another, like some of his other girlfriends. So we met another girlfriend, Sandra Theodore. She was a girlfriend from like the late seventies into the early, um, the early eighties. And again, they talked about the fact that she had a curfew. She wasn't allowed. Um, she went out to lunch one time with, um, a friend, like another playmate. And they, he was said a bodyguard and the bodyguard kept calling and checking in saying where they were, what they were doing, you know, that kind of thing. Um, it was just, so it was, it was definitely creating, a a conversation of, um, that isolation and, and Holly described it as having Stockholm syndrome. She said, cause that's what she's. She said when they asked her, well, did you love him? And she said, in a Stockholm Syndrome kind of way, like, yeah, I loved him because I thought, like, he was like, I saw him as, like, you know, yes, technically he was the one holding me there and keeping me sort of captive, but I loved him because I loved him, you know? I don't know, you know? So, let me look at my notes because, um, she, um, Um, one of his other friends said that he was obsessed with Charles Manson and he was obsessed with how Charles Manson was able to get these women to have their undying loyalty to him. That no matter like, like the fact that even in going to jail, 
they were faced with, you know, going to jail for all these murders and how he stayed, they stayed loyal to him and how he was obsessed with that. And he always used to say, how did he do that? How did he do that? How did he get these women to just be so loyal to him? Um, can't read my own hair right now, that one. They definitely talked about that there was these sex par parties with orgies. They said it was a, that he had a thing for young girls. He had a thing for that, you know, small waist, big boob, you know, thing. Plastic surgery. She said plastic surgery was a major, major thing in the um in the mansion that they all had it. And she admitted that she got her boobs done and her nose done and she would get little, you know, nip, dip, 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 dip. Um... They even show pictures of like when she first got to the mansion and then how when as she how long, was been there, you could see the difference. You could see. And they talked about how all of them basically ended up looking alike. They all had that blonde hair. They all had that same look. And they saw them being interviewed by a reporter. And the reporter even said to them, how do y'all tell each other apart? Like y'all all look alike. She said, so one day she decided that she wanted to cut her hair to look different, to just stand out. And he hated it. He was so angry with her when um, she cut her hair. They talked about Girls Next Door. She said she loved being on Girls Next Door because she got to actually have a job. She They gave her like a little, you know, bullshit job for the purposes of the film, of filming the show down at Playboy, you know, publishing or whatever. And she loved it, you know. And she said she absolutely loved the doors that it opened to her. And she loved being on the show. She said, you know, I, but but it was very much the way it the way it happened was very forced on them. That they basically Bridget talked about how she was in the shower and Hugh came to her and was like, you need to sign this contract right now. And she was like, can I finish taking my shower first? And he was like, no, you need to sign it right now. Right now, you need to sign this contract. And Holly said the same thing with her. He gave her the contract, and was like, sign it. And she was like, well, I want to read it. He was like, you don't have time to do that. Just sign this contract. And they said that it came, that Girls Next Door came at a great time for Playboy because it came at a time where they needed it to be relevant. You know, the platform was sort of falling off. Playboy wasn't what it used to be. And, you know, there were so many other outlets and so many other ways to get the Playboy experience that um, they were just losing some traction. And so the show definitely put them back in the spotlight, gave them sort of like a shot in the arm. And so he was desperate for the show to happen and desperate to keep the show going once it did happen. Um, she said one of the reasons why she was scared of leaving, one of the things that kept her there was that there were so many pictures of her and videos of her doing things, you know, un unimaginable things and things that she would have definitely been embarrassed for it to become public, and she was afraid of revenge porn. You know, she said she was just afraid that things would get leaked and, and things of that nature. And so that's what kept her there, even once she stopped being happy, what kept her there for so long. And she said that, you know, she had gotten into a deep depression, but girls, I mean, the Girls Next Door show sort of helped her. Like, she, she was happy again. And then once the... um what made her finally um, leave, she talked about being suicidal and she was saying, you know, imagine having sex in a group full of women that hate you, you know, like you're having these group sex sessions and everybody in the room hates you. Like they want your spot. You know, she talked about how they would go out to the club cause they, they would go clubbing twice a week and they would go to the club and these women would be recruiting these girls from the club to come back to the house and it would just be this she said it was just this endless cycle and you know it just got to be harder and harder for her and she said that you know the other girls were leaving you know we like i said kendrick left and got married bridget left and so she didn't uh, she was back to not having any friends in the house and it was just her and she said how one night she bridget said she called her one night and talked about how there was an altercation now, she never said anything physical about Hugh. Like, she never said he beat her or slapped her up or anything. But she said that they they did get into this argument. And when she got up to leave, he grabbed her by her hair and he yanked her. And that was when she was like, okay, that's it. I got to go. She said that over the years, she had saved her money really well. And she had um, been very good about investing her money. And so financially, she was good. And she left. 
She said that she is under no illusions. She understands that her time and play at Playboy and at the Playboy Mansion definitely opened up doors to her. You know, she had a cabaret show in Las Vegas. She did her own reality show about her cabaret show. So, you know, she said she's gotten married. She's had kids. So she is under no illusions about, you know, what that time did for her. But it was definitely some dark times to it. And it was definitely some, some not so great times to it. So, yeah, you know. It was definitely an interesting point of view to hear her story, you know. Um, and like I said, there were some other ex-girlfriends sprinkled in, but hers was like the main story. The other ex-girlfriends were pretty much kind of co-signing everything she was saying. Like, that was my experience. One woman said that, you know, her, this was like late 70s. It was, um, the, uh, it was the, um, Sandra. And she said that, you know, she was never interested in women. She was never, never wanted to be with the woman, but eventually she sort of gave into, you know, he kept asking and asking and asking and asking. And so eventually she gave into it and, you know, she said, but she didn't like it. It was never really comfortable for her. It wasn't something she wanted, you know, um, but she did give in cause he kept asking, you know, and that's just kind of that y'all. So that's what it is. That was episode two, honey. We'll be back next week for episode three. And her book is called Down the Rabbit Hole. So if y'all want to go read all the details, you know, I think she gets real detailed because his friends seem to be very unhappy with her story. So I feel like she gives all the details, honey. Anyway, I'll talk to y'all later.